Streetwear used to be exclusive, underground, items you had to really be plugged in to know about. These days, it seems that any brand that makes a hoodie gets the label. In recent years, the high fashion world has seen the value in streetwear designers and the trends they set. And the streetwear culture has become source material for looks on runways and in fashion weeks all around the world. So when Virgil Abloh designs a tee for Louis Vuitton, is it still streetwear or is it luxury? The lines of the fashion industry are blurring, but the experts here today are the visionaries given in shape and definition. They have commanded respect and given new meaning to the name of streetwear. This is Complex Conversations. What comes after streetwear? With your host, Carissa Sanchez. Um, so first, let's start. I think um, if you guys can go around one by one and tell the, the room how you define streetwear. I define it as something that's coming from the streets. I always think when you think about fashion, uh, there's a designer. They have a particular view of the world and how they want to see it. And they're designing product to that world. And I always thought that streetwear paid more attention to what was happening on the streets, took a lot more hints to what's happening right at the ground level, and then brought it through the design. So it's the opposite way that it's maybe historically happened. What do you guys think? Do you uh, agree with that? or? Yeah, I, I certainly agree with that. I think that uh, streetwear means different things in different settings and has mean different things at different times. Um, when I first heard the term streetwear, I feel like it was like maybe like late 90s, early 2000s or something, where it doesn't mean the same as now. I felt like back then it was like some type of movement that was like Japanese or California inspired uh, that was like something different than New York and Philly hip hop clothes, urban clothes. So at that time, I think it was like something that kind of like divided fashion or something. Like it was like, but kids like me thought it was cool. Like, oh, okay, everybody in my neighborhood is hip hop. I'm on streetwear. <laughs> like it was just, it's just another word that they throw out here to divide us. <laughs> I feel like it's like, it just doesn't connect us. It's like categorizing things. So now I feel like it's like, the mainstream, people love streetwear, but then it's also used against us to be like a bubble where you can't go outside of it, you know? So uh, I just think it means different things, but if it's positive, it's a positive word in my opinion, but it could be used against you. It's a double-edged sword, you know? It's like, it's great when it benefits the other party, and when it doesn't, it's like, oh, but you're streetwear. Yeah. 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 They well, try ultimately... to sign you with the streetwear thing <laughs> yeah. a little bit. Like, but I love that <clears throat> it's streetwear. Yeah, streetwear is dope, you know. And it's something authentic that if you don't come from the streets, you shouldn't be claiming it. But they're mimicking it, and we, <laughs> we consume what they mimic. So I guess we're <laughs> solid, we're validating it. You know? <laughs> well, I mean, with me, like, I grew up like, with brands like BBC and Bape and, you know, Stussy and Supreme. And those were like the grails. And then there was like Margiela and Prada or whatever the case may be. But then as the years like pass, you have like On the War and like um, Pyrex Vision who like blurred the lines of like what it means to be like street, you know? And when we think street where you think like hoodies or t-shirts or graphic design but that's just like everyday clothes I don't, to put it as streetwear is like i agree with like don saying it's like kind of demeaning in a sense because like they try to put us in a box like oh we're streetwear but we're in italy you know um making custom fabrics so it's just not like you steal like a google image and just put it on the t-shirt it's like it's more than just that. Um, I don't really know if I have a clear definition on what streetwear is now. I know what it was and I kind of know like where it was in the middle, but right now it's kind of confusing because it kind of transitioned into being in like luxury stores like Barney's and stuff like that. But um, I don't think it's limiting at all. I think it's kind of like the great place to be. People always want t-shirts and hoodies and sweats, you know, more than anything else or any other category. So I think it's great. 
Guillermo, Dawn, and for you, Ev, a lot of times your brands are categorized as streetwear, right? When you do interviews, when people write about you, it's always streetwear designer or streetwear clothing. Um, one, how do you personally define your brand? And then also, how do you feel when people call you that if you don't necessarily agree with that? Because I think some designers will straight up say in interviews, I'm not streetwear, yeah. or I hate that term, or you know, whatever, but. I think like, the most important thing to say is like, we're making art, you know? If this was, I'm saying me personally, if I was coming out of like Paris or somewhere like Belgium, would they say, is it streetwear? You know, because we just did our first runway show and it's like, streetwear is up and coming, da 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 da, but it's like, these are like draping pieces, you know? It's like, if someone is wearing this on the street, then I can be like, yes, that's streetwear. I'm gonna go to Barney's contemporary section and find that, you know? So, I don't know, it's kind of weird. Do you guys hate it? Do you? I don't hate it, but uh, I think it's like limiting. It is like a, a, it's putting a ceiling on you, labeling. It's like, you know, if somebody caught you like black designer. Yeah. So at the award show, you can only get the top black designer award. You know, like, it's like, man, okay, yeah, I'm proud to be a black designer, <laughs> but that's not all I want to be, you know? Like, it's like hip So that's what I think it is. Just, I think the categor categorization <laughs> is kind of whack. I don't like it. I like people should be what they want to be messaged as, you know. Uh, like the curator of Complex Con, Mirakami, I think he's cool because he has like million dollar paintings and then like you can consume him with like a $100. stick of bubble gum, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And, it, and you don't call <laughs> the stick of bubble gum, he's a high end artist or he's, a, he's a, a, one of the greatest contemporary living artists. You don't box him in. Japanese artists, you know, like it's like, man, that's just something they put on us though. Well, I, I guess I would say whatever anybody wants to call it, you know, it's a beautiful thing that's brought so many people together and we've built a massive community out of it. So it, regardless of whether, you know, um, some person in the position of power wants to use it for any type of way that makes you feel less, you can look behind you at the millions of people who love it and you know that it's a positive thing. Mm. So it doesn't really matter what anybody calls it. So for me, streetwear is fashion. Mm -hmm. Truth be told, I didn't know Margiela. I didn't know, you know, I knew like uh, Echo. I knew Mecca. I knew South Pole. I knew Sean John. I knew not like rock. That was my fashion. Jabose was like the fanciest thing I ever saw. So I think, you know, for me, I've always like really strived to empower myself and give myself my value and go as far as I can with it. Not disrespecting anybody else, not proving anybody else wrong, but just saying, look, these are the things that I love and these are the things that inspired me and this is my take on it. So call it whatever you want, because we're going to win. You guys mentioned the term streetwear being limiting, and if you can share any examples without airing anyone out or whatever, but I think it's helpful for people in the room who are interested in this um, subject or maybe aspiring designers, how that term has maybe limited you in your brands, or even for you, Chris, your business, when people call Union, a streetwear store, like how has that term limited you um, from signing a partnership or, you know, getting further in your careers? And I guess, how did you overcome that challenge? Well, early on, um, you know, I guess at the end of the day, we are 100% a streetwear store. Um, and early on, as we kind of evolved and wanted to bring in maybe more high-end brands into the store, we were met with a lot of resistance. Well, what other brands do you carry? And they usually wanted to know, oh, if you didn't carry Gucci or this, that, or the other, then you couldn't bring in their brand. Um, fortunately, there are a couple of maybe more, I don't know, um, understanding or like just brands that kind of got it, got what we were presenting and got kind of what we were trying to do. Um, so we were able to bring in Comme des Garçons and their circle of brands. And also uh, Tom Brown was an early brand that we brought in when we were like, oh, because we were seeing that the kid coming into our store wanted, was oh. into like something additional, not, you know, or, but and. 
uh, with the streetwear and, and mixing it. And, and quite frankly, that was something that I was also really into. Like, I wanted to wear like a Vivian Westwood suit, but some <laughs> sneakers or whatever, you know. So, um, so we did receive a lot of resistance. And some of the things that I did, I ended up kind of over-promising to bigger brands. Um, they came in with really big uh, minimum demands from us. And I was like, all right, we'll do it because I really want to be this thing. Um, I could sit here today now after m having made a lot of mistakes and having to like maybe even like, you know, I, I think like kind of biblical, like, or, you know, when, when uh, one of the disciples, Jesus was like, you're going to deny me three times. Yeah. I think I might have denied that we were a streetwear store to a couple brands in order to get the bigger brands in there. Um, now, nowadays, um, you know, I made those mistakes. I paid for them. We got in brands that really didn't understand who we are. So as we kind of shaped and molded their brand within our store, they didn't really get it. Um, nowadays, I'm, I'm very straightforward. We're a streetwear store. Um, I get, and, and I've been on the good side and the bad side of all the things these guys are hinting at, where you kind of get pigeonholed into this one thing, oh, it's streetwear, and streetwear means this. Um, <coughs> And I don't think we mean that. And I guess that's why my definition of streetwear changes. Changes. Mm -hmm. So my definition is, I guess, mine. <laughs> and it's because, hey, we're not like men. We're not men's contemporary or high fashion or, or you know, whatever it is. Um, the different, you know, urban. Urban would have been the early. Urban really streetwear grew out of urban, right? And no one talks about that anymore. No one talks about urban. But urban is really streetwear is a pivot off of urban. But. Um, <clears throat> I just said, now I'm like, yeah, we're a streetwear store. Call us what you want. Um, our, the provenance of who we are is well represented now. And inevitably, the consumer and the person, you know, I think, sorry, somebody mentioned it here today, but like whoever is buying or supporting your brand, they know who you are. And they can, they'll, they'll get that through your messaging. Yeah, is there anything you guys want to add from a brand perspective? Like, because I think what's interesting now is, you know, as Chris mentioned, I think sometimes the street, the term streetwear can be limiting, but I also think because as it's become mainstream, it's almost like an advantage sometimes too, right? Because I do think there are retailers, I won't name names, but I think some of them are purposely maybe targeting you guys to help bring in a younger consumer. Mm -hmm. Right, whether that's through collaborations, whether that's through carrying you on their men's floor, whatever it is. So do you have any examples you want to share in terms of how it's limited, but also maybe how it's helped you get into a Barney's or? Well, I know when they come to do, um, I don't say them, it's like buyers or like <laughs> people when they come to see the collection, they're like, all right, where's the t-shirts, where's the hoodies, where's the jeans? And it's like this piece that we formulated that we took like three months to drape right there. Like, mm -hmm. oh, this is really interesting. It's just like but whatever. Yeah, yeah, so it's like, that's like the thing is like, they know what's like they want to see of you or their represent, representation of you in the store. It's like they think it's t-shirts, hoodies, and jeans or whatever the case is. I think be. They, they predict that they think the audience just wants that from you, mm -hmm. rather than listening to what you're trying to communicate or seeing what you're trying to create. They just know what they come in and want to buy. You know, like, oh, right. do you, your hoodie's going to be fire. Yeah. You know, but it's like, oh, we didn't do hoodies this season. You know, like. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's interesting because, and, and I don't know if you guys agree, but I think to me when I see that, I see it as retailers or big companies almost trying to capitalize off of the trend of streetwear. Right? They're not, I don't know that there are a lot of big companies who are genuinely invested and interested in, you know, the people who make up this culture, except for this current moment. Mm -hmm. Well, I Would think you agree? there's like yeah. those certain like boutiques, like more so overseas that are not like well known as like, uh, I'm not going to say any names, but that will like buy into like your vision and your art. And then you're like, you had to take this and they're like, yes, we want this, you know? So it's honestly like what you make of it. It's like if you're going to make a t-shirt and it's like, you know, like they want just t-shirts, you have to make the illest t-shirt that is, can't be duplicated by yeah, another band. Or if it is, it's like, you know, we started that wave. I mean, you know, what he's saying is right. You got to make the best of it. They only want hoodies from you. Guess what? Give them the best. Hoodie. You get to decide what goes on that hoodie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or the other thing, you know, I, I had a discussion with someone last year, kind of related more to like uh, 
kind of the racial background of streetwear and, and kind of in particular like where people of color fall into that. And one of the things that I was kind of venting in a similar way, like, oh, well, there's, you know, uh, no black designers or people don't, and, and, you know, they made a very good point. Like the consumer has to demand that too. Yeah. So, you know, if you're a consumer that's really into streetwear, <clears throat> you've kind of got to support or demand that, you know, I'm wearing two hats here. I'm a designer, but I'm also the retailer. Mm -hmm. So we're, as a retailer, at some point in time, we're buying what the streets want. Mm -hmm. Going back to my definition of streetwear, we're buying what the consumer is going to support. So the consumers also have to w take a certain level of responsibility, much like the designers do and the retailers, mm -hmm. to support like a robust streetwear or a robust, you know, whatever your brand is that you're, you know, um, the consumers have to pay a part, you know, and if all they're buying is t-shirts and sweats, that's all the retailer's gonna buy, and then it kind of becomes that. And I mean, as we were talking about it to now, uh, now I was talking to like an old um, salesperson for Balenciaga. Balenciaga is this very storied high fashion brand known for making beautiful prints and this, that, and the other. Like 80% of their business is sneakers, t-shirts, and hats right now, because streetwear is, that's where, so even there, you know, we're frustrated because we feel like our brands are peg, pegged into that. They are too. They're <laughs> doing the same thing. But I feel like in, in a way, when you guys are pigeonholed into this category, sometimes it does limit you guys and maybe it is sometimes a disadvantage. But I think when a brand like Balenciaga kind of takes what you guys do, all of a sudden they're the biggest brand. All of a sudden everybody's wearing streetwear and sneakers. And to your point, like now, most of their business is made up of the stuff that you guys, I think, have influenced and created. So how does that yeah. feel to see? We've both? always been the influence, you know, like designers from like the beginning of time were on the street looking at like what people in the urban areas are wearing. Like, you know, we go back to the 90s with like Tommy Hilfiger, like bringing in like Aaliyah and like all the rap and rap and R&B artists. It's like, we've always been on the scope. It's just now that the playing fields are even that we are able to take advantage of like the social media to capitalize and build up brands now that they want to be like, okay, this is fashion, but this is streetwear. It's like, you know, it's like we've always had that influence. It's just now it's like, how do we like put them over there and like not like give it its full credit or its full due? Cause it's the same thing with music. Cause like you have to think about hip hop, Hip hop is pop, but no one wants to say that it's mm. pop. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's hip hop because it's black. That was the example I was thinking of. Music, <laughs> it's like hip hop. Like they can't deny hip hop being the the movement. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So they would try to, oh, the you East Coast, you West Coast, oh, you down <clears throat> South, oh, you this. It's all hip hop. So at the end of the day, it's like different people add different sauce to the game. I think a lot of the elements that come from the streets are can be categorized as street wear, but it shouldn't, it can't, it doesn't have to be just streetwear, you know, it can mm -hmm. be more too. Cause every, I mean, when you are creative and you come from the streets, you are, your creations are gonna be derived from the streets, you know? Right. Uh, that's the interesting perspective, I think. And then applying that to other lanes and other fields, I think is what people that come from the streets can just come with new styles when you add that street to something else. So it's so, all good. I love what Balenciaga doing, whatever, it's all good. Because <laughs> what it is, is their perspective. Like a real person from the street, and who am I to say that the designer that's working on the Balenciaga isn't from the streets? They from the streets too, you know what I'm saying? So it's their street perspective. But I even like it where people think it's like posing, where like a designer <laughs> tries to design like a street. I like yeah. that because it's like, oh, I got certain codes I'm not gonna go against. But you, you don't know what this <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to deliver, you know, something really creative. Yeah. I mean, that's an interesting thing about a, it. A good parallel of all this that I've always had in my head is, comp is through the art world. Like the difference between fine art mm -hmm. or street art or graffiti. You know, like what's the difference between like graffiti and street art? And then what's the difference between street art and fine art? Mm -hmm. And a lot of all of these artists are showing in the best museums in the right. world, you know? selling for like millions of yeah, dollars. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So for you guys, especially, I think for um, Garamo, Don, and Ev, um, I think 
You all come from streetwear, obviously, and you mentioned brands like Stussy and, and BBC and all that stuff, but how do you take your relation to streetwear and your history, but make more than a t-shirt and hoodie? Because I think sometimes people who come from streetwear think they can only make those things. So talk a little bit about your decision behind your brand and your approach and how you guys translate that. Well. For me, it's always about the story and like the legacy of the brand. Like you got to think with like Gucci or like Louis Vuitton. Like what's their story or what's their legacy? When you think about it, it's like leather goods, luxury, France. You know, for me, it's like what do I want to? My story as a black man in America is like how do I channel that so a kid in Arkansas could see the shirt and, and make him think and be like, I kind of get like where he's coming from with like the America flag. American flag on fire that says who decides war. You know, it's all about creating a legacy. It's just like the channel is streetwear or fashion or clothes, no matter what it is. It's just like, how do you create your impact on the world? And it's like, whatever it's labeled as, it's whatever, because as long as the message is being put out there, that's the goal. What about you guys? Um, with me, I want to build like a heritage brand. So I want my brand to be around for a while. So when I'm trying to create, I'm trying to think of ideas that like are not just going to be cool for that season, like something that you could wear like two, three seasons later and people be like, oh, this fresh. You know, I'm always into stuff like that because I see that everything I see now, especially with so many brands and so much we're consuming, uh, everything I see is like, oh, this hot right now. Like I literally I buy clothes and then I see like so many people in it. So then I won't wear it. Because it's like, oh, I should have wore that first, you know? Like, <laughs> and so this stuff is like, you know, disposable almost. So I'm like trying to build something that people can appreciate. Like, oh, man, I appreciate that this is, you got this knitted or you thought this different. Especially because I'm so influenced by sports. Mm -hmm. So it's not a category that you think is some quality goods, you know? Like, so that's like... Where I, where I try to go when I want to go with just trying to make the best product I can with my resources. What about you, yeah. Jeremy? <laughs> <laughs> um, you just agree with what they say? Well, I mean, it's kind of hard not to, you know what I mean? <laughs> without, without these two guys, 424 would never exist. So, you know, it, 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 this is the first time I've gotten to hear this perspective, so it's exciting for me. Yeah, I'm equally as excited as everybody out there, because this is cool. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. Um, what this but is to dope. add to the, the only bit I would add to that, and kind of the reason I started making product in the first place, was because um, I was looking for something that I couldn't find. And I thought, well, maybe I can try and make it. And like he said, you know, at the time, there was no resources. So I could only make what I could make at that moment in time. So you continue to push. And then, you know, I guess the ultimate ambition would be to look back 10, 15, 20, in some cases, 30 years, 40. Ralph is like 50 years in, right? And think, OK, I really managed to create a lifestyle around my perspective, my point of view you know, with these tools that I had. And I managed to go this hard. So ultimately, I would like to do that. I would like to create a lifestyle brand, you know? And whatever the 424 lifestyle is, will probably grow as I learn more and more and more. And that's like, you know, I mean, I'm making suits now. You know, I, I had to get my first t-shirt made at a dry cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is there anything, at least for people in this room, you guys can share in terms of, uh, you know, I think a, a lot of you guys are dominating men's fashion right now, right? But sometimes what you hear is, well, these people are self-trained, they don't have experience, they never went to school. So how do you figure out to build this brand, um, both in streetwear, but also trying to get into the luxury space where maybe things are a little bit more technical than screen printing a shirt? You can chime in too. I feel like you have. You, you to, me, I feel you like you me. can answer all these questions too. So. <laughs> There's just so many resources at our disposal. You know, like we build network here at ComplexCon. We meet people. You know, when like um, Guillermo was saying, like when he first did his T-shirt at the dry cleaners, and then now he's making suits in Italy. So it's like, but to do that, you you go in. You're 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 in it. 
you decide to say, hey, this is what I want to do. I'm here. I'm taking in the knowledge. I'm going in the field. I'm, I'm getting my hands dirty. I'm really trying to do this. I'm meeting people. And then you're going to grow. Your resources are going to grow. And then you'll be able to do more and more. So I just think we just all got to just keep and sharing resources. That's one thing we'd be real scary to do. Like, oh, I got this. You know, like, oh, man, these resources are resources for everyone. Like, and if we're not afraid, if we really truly believe that we're here to help the community get better, then we won't selfishly do or and even the, on the other side, we won't abuse someone helping us with their resource. You know, it goes both ways. So it's just everybody got to just try to play their part to just make it better. I mean, the number one thing is like you got the internet at your disposal. Like, there's factories all across the world. It's like you just had to go and search for what you want. You know, and sometimes it's hard, but you know, there's Instagram as well. Like. You could go on any one of our pages, go through our f who we're following, and there's a lot of hidden yeah. gems in there, you know? <laughs> it's just like, you got to do your research. Like, How did you do it when I started, you started your I mean, started making t-shirts in high school. So there was like this place that made like varsity jackets, and um, we just went over there. It's like, hey, can you screen print? And he was like, yeah, cool. Can you bring the art? So we like printed out the art. And we just pre um, screen printed some shirts and then just like going online, sublimating t shirts, going on Alibaba or whatever the case may be. <laughs> you know, you got to start yeah. somewhere. But then it's just like going to the garment district, you're, you're in LA, like you're in one of the biggest manufacturing hubs in the United States. You know, you could just go downtown LA and just ask questions like, where can I get this sewn? Where can I find a wash house or wherever? It's just like being in the field, as Don said. Yeah, I'll move to LA just to go downtown and like learn and like walk around Same. and meet people Same. and and that's how I met people and and a lot of people I see here, people I meet just in the field, you know. So uh, I think it's fun that way. And then our our brands can continue to grow. Yeah. Like hopefully you guys see the progress. And oh man, I see you got another vendor, another supplier that you're doing this now. Okay, your brand now you guys can do this. It's exciting. That's when I look at designers. I'm impressed by their growth. Mm -hmm. And I tell them every time, like usually the first collection be t-shirts. You see their design. Right. And that's the thing. And then the next collection, you see their process. And, and so I encourage everybody, keep the design just as equal as the process. When you, Because sometimes when they get the process ready, then they stop designing. <laughs> but keep it all <laughs> dope. You know, the like, but I'm just saying, that's just what happens. Yeah. You know, when you use your right hand a lot, your left gets not as good, you know. But you just got to stay ambidextrous on the court. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything you want to um, add, Chris? Because I think we sort of just went through this with the collab um, a little bit. But Everything they're saying is true I've had the same experiences because of my first my priority is the store as a retailer and only in the last couple years have we been making our own product so as much as maybe I'm I've been in the game a really long time longer than everybody here from a perspective of making goods I have not so I'm the rookie on this stage for making goods so I'm still Trying to, I'm like 20,000 leagues under the sea trying to figure out a lot of stuff. But, and it's frustrating and it's, it takes a lot out of you. But um, I, I also appreciate, you know, I know that that work is going to come to fruition and, and be fruitful. But I'm still like digging for wash houses here that can do what I need done. I did my first collection in Japan. Uh, it was really great, but it was expensive, so I brought it back to America. It was okay, and it was cheap or <laughs> affordable, but um, not, but uh, but not to the quality I wanted. I went back to Japan, um, and I, to tell you the honest truth, I'm not sure where I'm producing right now. <laughs> but, but I'm I'm trying. But I'm saying like that whole process. I it's frustrating, but I also appreciate. But that's what I got to go through. And when I get that final outcome, I'm going to be really happy with it. Mm -hmm. And I think about, you know, these guys are like, yeah, you can go online, which you can. I mean, the resources now are infinite and really at your, at your disposal quite easily. When you were thinking, when you were, guys were recounting how you guys got your stuff made, I, I remembered like a fucked a brand we used to have, Eric Brunetti. We did a show with him a couple years ago. And he had a, he, in the show, he had a hand-drawn screen print 
like we know screen prints where we do it in the computer mm -hmm. and give it to the, to the screen printer. He had one where it was all done by hand because oh, wow. that's what he had to do yeah. like 30 that years ago. You gotta do it, yeah. yeah. you know? And the thing like, sorry to like drag this on me, Guillermo was just talking in the back, it's like, you had to use your resources where you can, like certain things you can't get made here in LA or New York or wherever, there's somewhere in, someone in China or somewhere that they're in the better world, at they that category, it, you know? yeah. And it's like, you find, we split up things and just gotta do it. You, you find the right people to make the right product. You know, you're gonna find yourself on a lot more trips <laughs> and it, it, it's, it's the second that you're like, oh cool, I got this fabric the way I wanted. So okay, well, let's do leather goods. Let's do this, <laughs> let's do that. So you just kind of continue to go, you know? And every, I mean, here in LA, you know, off top, you wanna make jersey, denim, you know, like you're in, you're in the Mecca. So get to it. Um, you guys are all in uh, luxury retailers, right? Like Barney's and all these other places. How do you kind of manage um, that part of your business? Like trying to get into a space like that, how do you appeal to, because I think, you know, People who come to ComicsCon are obviously fans of you guys, but then how do you balance maybe more of a, a bar, I'm, and I'm just using Barney's as an example, you know? RIP. Um, how do you also capture maybe more of a Barney's customer who maybe didn't grow up on streetwear, quote unquote? Um, sometimes it's just strategy. Like, I, I guess like with me, my thinking was to be in like those type of retailers. So, I'm sorry to say it like this low level, but like so people could appreciate my collection in the same thought as other collections they see there. But I don't think that should matter. So me doing that, I guess, is perpetuating that prejudice, you know, that it shouldn't matter where it's at, you know. I, I actually love products that are like cheap, that rich people covet, you know, something <laughs> like that, or like things that like, are like no value, but everyone goes crazy for. So I'm into things like that, like a, I don't know, like a, a Michael Jordan jersey. It's something that the bum, when you walk out of this convention center, has on. But then you'll go to the Michelin Ness booth and pay 350 for it. You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just like it's good no matter what. Um, and so I, I just try to stay focused on stuff like that. Do you? What do you guys think of brands that do diffusion lines? Like someone will have a brand for Barney's and then maybe for like a PacSun. There's a. That's a good strategy. Yeah. I think that's a good little strategy. Do you feel like it takes away from anything else I mean, that you do, or it's just you, Rick Owens has different? Dark Shadow, and no one cares. Like, you see, like people are like, this is Rick Owens, it's Dark. And Shadow. does it mean that the diffusion <laughs> is cheaper or low value? It could be just as hot, just a different price point. Like maybe it's like, oh my, diffusion line might be t-shirts, but the t-shirt is not going to cost as much as the sweaters and the outerwear. So it's not a diffusion. It's just that's my t-shirt line, okay. you know. Well, uh, I think it's really, like, I think the best example is fine artists. You know, they could do stuff for like mi comments, millions yeah. of dollars, and then they can also do stuff that's really palatable and affordable for everyone. And, and it, it shouldn't take away from the million dollar painting, you know? And it's a dance, right, that yeah. that designer or brand or artist has to play. Like, how much is too much in one space or the other? But I think, you know, uh, depending on how you do that dance, I mean, I'll speak for, we did we did a pop up with Nordstrom's this year, right? And definitely when it, when they asked me to do it, I was a little apprehensive for all the reasons one could assume here. It's not really a streetwear door. It's not where our stuff would be. But I I wanted uh, the opportunity to expand. We have basically one store here and one store in Japan. We don't do wholesale. And I thought, oh, for a one time thing here or there. I want the opportunity to expand and get a new customer. So I, I took the meeting um, and I was really impressed with the team that they had and really happy with how they, what they wanted to do. Um, so I moved forward. Would I do that five times a year? Would I have our stuff in there or another like mine? Fed, I call them, you, you're saying Barney's, I call them all federated. So a federated <laughs> store? Probably not, but I, I was, I'm proud of what we did and happy with what we did with them. And, and I would do it again with, with in moderation, for sure. For Chris and for you, Matthew, has that change affected 
your work, if anything, like you owning a business and having your brand in terms of you buying certain brands or having a store, or for you, Matthew, like has that affected or dictated or whatever the case is with you guys' work? Uh, for, for me, no, I've had a pretty singular focus with how I, I run the shop and, and I've obviously, you know, I started working at Union before it was mine in 96 and so I have a pretty good understanding. I guess lately it hasn't because I've come full circle to really embracing what, I, what streetwear is for me and it's very personal. Um, as I said, maybe five years ago, I kind of had some hurdles where I did maybe try and make the store something it wasn't, try and get, bring in more high-end high brands and, you know, um, but so that struggle was then. I've kind of come through that now and now I'm pretty comfortable with what it is. Like kind of, I echo what Guillermo said basically, like people can call it whatever they want. Um, I, actually, I remember when, you know, in like 98, when people started, when that term probably first got coined, and there was no, like, we're talking three brands that are doing it, and the three brands were like, we don't like being called streetwear, <laughs> right? Like, so that's not old that people don't like that. Mm -hmm. I understand the kind of context of not wanting to be pigeonholed, and I, you know, we have a couple, like, lug, more luxurious brands in our store that people deem as streetwear, um, and the b designers are like, I don't want to be called that. Like, you know, I, I want to be looked at as the same as some of the Parisian kind of high fashion brands. And I get that. I guess, I think Guillermo or Dom, you guys are all saying great stuff, so I forget who said it. I apologize. But you've got to create your own story. And your consumers will follow that. I think, you know, one of the things that I get asked a lot about how we take brands in and the number one thing I try to tell people is, like, you have to have a story. You know what I mean? There's so much product. You can go downstairs right now and see a lot of it. And, you know, inevitably, the ones that are going to survive, the ones that are going to do well, are people that have a story to tell, have an intriguing story to tell, and know how to tell it. And I get a lot of brands that don't know. They might have a really great product, but they don't know how to tell the story of what that product is. Or they might have a really shitty product and are, be really great storytellers. And I tell you, <laughs> at least right now, that, that does you better. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I so <clears throat> inevitably, you can write your own story. I think the people who have done really successful, um, the guy that comes to mind is someone we all know, Virgil, has probably been one of the most successful stories coming out of streetwear. Um, that's because he is an incredible storyteller. Um, yeah. You know, you know you can look at a photo or his design and you're in his world in a second. And I think that's what's important. And so streetwear, not streetwear, high fashion, what's your story? And people can put it into whatever. I don't, I don't think Virgil cares. I, I mean, I, I don't know if people are call his stuff streetwear. You know? Like, <laughs> it's, he, it is what it is. It's, it's off-white or it's Virgil Abloh or, or, what, or what have you. Or for us, it's union. I don't really care where, where people put it. Um, it's union and mm -hmm. it comes from you know, my heart or my mind. Okay. I don't know if I answered your question at all, but no, you <laughs> I'm sorry. What about you, Matthew, from a stylist perspective? Well, I guess uh, to kind of piggyback off of what he said, I think we're in a time where um, there's so many brands and there's so much product out there, it's kind of difficult for people to kind of discern like what's streetwear, what's luxury, what's good, what's bad, because I think we're just, inundated with too much product and too many brands and too many designers. So I think for me, work-wise, it's become so easy to decipher what's good and what's bad because a lot of it is just derivative of things we've been seeing for like years and other designers have done. And then there's some really great things that people haven't done before or presented in new ways. So it's, it's really interesting the time that we're in right now because, I mean, just like he was saying, you can see downstairs, there's some really amazing things and there's some things that are, <laughs> you know, I mean, to each, their, to, each, to, each, to, to each their own, you know, and I think everybody does deserve a chance and an opportunity, but I think as purveyors of the community, we have a, an obligation to, to be genuine, to be original, and to present it to the public in a way that, you know, it can be digested properly. You know, we shouldn't be out there just throwing things out there because you have money, so you, you make a brand. I mean, it's not necessary. It's also not very green. <laughs> Poor environment. Yeah. You can really. <laughs> What do you guys think is 
the next phase of streetwear? I think everybody's kind of already hinted at it. Don said it when he was talking about how he wants to create, a, you know, his his version of like Ralph Lauren or something. Like he wants to build a, a brand, a lifestyle brand for for years to come. Um, he talked about it with kind of the provenance of the brand. I think what's going to happen next is, okay, we've got, we keep on referencing downstairs, so why stop? There's a thousand brands downstairs. Not all of them are going to survive, right? The ones that are going to survive are the ones that have a history of doing good product and being able to communicate that their story well and continue to do it. And they build a provenance and they build like a strong following in their brand to the point where you know they become, in essence, a heritage brand. I was asked downstairs about this panel today, and they said, what are you going to talk about? And I, I said, I think they want to talk about where streetwear going. And they were like, we started talking, and they brought up Champion. And I was like, well, I don't really consider Champion a streetwear brand, but it's funny you mention that. They're a heritage brand now. They can now put their toe into streetwear if they want, because they have 30, 40, I don't know, 100 years of history of doing their brand, and, and they've built a, a story around that, and they've built an identity that they can now, they can dip into sportswear, which is really what they are, or streetwear, or what have you. I think, you know, there's going to be a good, hopefully a robust group of brands that come out of this, this is our moment now, mm -hmm. you know, and the yeah. cream's going to rise to the top, and those brands, I hope over time will become heritage brands that people can trust for years to come, because there's a lot of fake brands out there right now. <laughs> it's just what it is. Or a lot of people that are in it for the wrong reasons or not doing a good design or stealing somebody else's designs or what have you. So hopefully the cream will rise to the top. Uh, my part or my part to play in it is a, is a retailer, is, is editing and choosing the, design, the brands that we want to carry in our story that we think have a provenance and have a hit, have a future. None, no, there's no brand in our store that we've brought in because we think, oh, it's going to get us through this season. You know, it's always I always look for longevity. So I think that's what the consumer will want, as they have so many choices. A, a place I often look to, which I think is a really good reference, would be like the Japanese market because they've been doing streetwear for longer than us or maybe you know in in their own way so you see now all the japanese brands that really were the up and coming brands up until maybe and maybe that have been around for like 15 years now they now are just people know to go you want a military jacket you go to double taps you want you know and now they go to that and they don't have to reinvent themselves every season like we still do now because they've got that provenance they've got that um heritage is there anything you as, as anything, when the when the <coughs> community grows, it's going to get gentrified. So uh, I think because it's like you said, hopefully the cream will rise at the top. So I think all the good talent and all the good creative ideas will all get out, but probably not through like streetwear brands. I see more like corporations consuming the streetwear brands or the streetwear designers. And then having them like defunct they brands and they'll just take the best talent to work for the big corporations like every other yeah. industry that grows. We're just in an industry. We've seen this with so many other industries, you know, like, and this is our industry. Yeah. You know, it's like the same thing with hip hop, like, you know, like there's an imprint, like there's Universal, there's yeah. Atlantic, there's. Only the Whatever. big boys gonna be the big boys after a while. All these smaller brands, I think, or the ones that the designers that stay true will not give up and they'll keep their core audience. So hopefully I like to support those. But as a consumer, it's hard when this other brand that has all these marketing dollars and PR is gonna make something more enticing to my eye. So that's why I love people that pervade a culture like a union because he's looking at brands as like longtime partners that he believes in and he edits and he curates to bring to his shop. So it offers something else than just what we get marketed to all day. Because of course that's what we're gonna, oh man, I saw this rapper in that shirt and this designer, that must be the hot shirt this season. I need, that's because that's a PR play. That's not authentic when you see these mag These magazines don't even have access to the real streets, you know? <laughs> they don't. I know it because I be in Paris and I wear something that's not on the cusp and they're always asking, what's this, what's this? 
And I'm like, oh, you're ignorant <laughs> about this? Because it's not from out here. You know, it's from the streets. It's some new kid in America that got this, you know, and, and I think that's what I like. But unfortunately, I do see the big companies, they're going to consume it up, but it's all good. It's like the, the dopest talent will now have a bigger platform to put their stuff out. So it'll work out. Is there anything that you guys want to see less of or more of in the industry right now? I think, Why like, are you laughing, Matthew? <laughs> less copycat, <laughs> like yeah, more original yeah. talent. Less of everything we yeah. all agree on. I, I, I would like to add something to what everybody else is saying. I think, um, you know, w we have to take responsibility for our part in it, too. And it's time that we deliver on our promise. We've been banging on the doors, let us in, let us in, let us in. And they, in fact, have in a lot of cases. So, you know, we have to make sure that the right people getting the right jobs. We have to make sure that we're supporting our community when it's like, when it has a chance to go there. You know, so when Virgil gets to go to Louis Vuitton, we support like wholeheartedly. We have to support each other. Yeah. And if you get a chance, you gotta like show up. You know, like you gotta work, you gotta show up, you gotta do the work and you gotta deliver on your promise. A lot of people like, you know, I, I, I like to see when somebody continues to push forward. And for me, I think that that's the first order of business. It's like, okay, all right, cool. Like, they let me in, finally. You know, I'm here. I needed 30 minutes. I knew exactly what I was going to do with Adidas. Like, I, I, I was like, bro, I've been waiting 30 years for this. Like, you know, like, I don't, I don't need time. I thought they invited me for a coffee, bro. <laughs> As I did tours, I'm like, okay, okay. Oh, thank you for coming. I'm like, oh, work. You know, by the time they said yes, I was like, bro, just get out of the way. I'm here. Let's go. You know, like we really have to, you know, like we empower ourselves. We demand. You know, we get like, and then at the end, you also have to deliver. So like, you know, <laughs> the the internet, you know, is a reflection of what's happening behind the scenes. So like, don't get it twisted. <laughs> you gotta work hard and not sleep. For I mean. I, it's 10 years in March, I haven't slept in 10 years. Not like, not legit, you know? So these guys are not up here by accident. Like it is a full time commitment of energy, emotion, passion, and you know, and a lot of people's family, and ultimately your lifestyle. Like really, you have to dive all the way in. And it's the only way that anything will continue to move forward. You know, so they let us in and Thanks and all that, but you know, I'm here to work. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think it's just our responsibility to like keep the door open for people who look like us and understand the struggles like we've been through as minorities on the stage, you know, because as you said, like we weren't just given this, like we had to work hard. So it's up to us, like the same way like Virgil, like put his hand around me, he's like, uh, like come here. It's like, we had to do the same for up and coming talent and not try to stifle or like, use a kid to like make our brand better but it's like okay like come work for me in the same time like I'll help you get resources and then it goes on and on so it's like streetwear like 10 20 years from now it's like they know who started it well not started but they know who's like the who made it into like this thing that it is now not just like t-shirts and hoodies yeah I think that's great I think it, it's a nice feeling sometimes, not like it happens every time, but you know, when you are valued for what you bring to the table and they respect your opinion. So, you know, when that happens, be sure to follow through, like go all the way. I think <laughs> the biggest part of my experience from the beginning when I first started up until now is um, seeking out young designers and supporting young designers because I feel like um, in my, you know, I had the same experience. When I started, nobody gave a shit about me, so. It was really difficult. Um, and the same thing with them. When you're building a brand, you need support. And I think that as people who have experience and we have a great eye for things, to help people along the way that kind of have the same story as us. So that is one thing I want to see more of is us helping each other out. One thing I'd like to see less of is just like things that are derivative. Like if someone, um, for instance, makes like 
a shirt with like a smiley face on it. Just like, <laughs> like, let that be the well, smiley face, and sure. you do you do a sunshine, you do flowers, you do something else. Because I just feel like after a while, it just seems smiley face style. Yeah. La- <laughs> it's so lazy, and it and takes away from the takes, original idea too. Yeah, and it's like um, there's there's so many other things out there besides smiley faces. <laughs> so I I just it just gets really tiring, and it's yeah, like yeah. you know you put money into that to make that. You know, somebody, it's, it's just really tiresome to see that. And it's, it's something that's been happening in the industry for like the past four years. Like someone does something really great and then someone else comes behind and makes the same thing for, you know, $40 less. And I understand that, you know, not everybody can afford everything, but, you know, not everything is for everyone. I feel like there's something out there for everyone. But I think that there's something that we should be doing in this industry to respect one another's ideas. Um, and I think that will bring back a different energy to our industry that's been missing for such a long time. You know, it's so homogenized and it's so commercial. There used to be a real energy in streetwear um, and in menswear, and it's, and it's changed. It's come, like a little boring, um, but there are some bright spots throughout. So I think it would be great if like people maybe stop looking at social media so much and what other people are doing and then just like design in a tunnel and not look at what's going on around you, not use too many references when you're making your collections because it really shows like who's doing original things Mm -hmm. and who's not doing original things. And I mean, everybody on this panel is doing original things, so there's no problems here, but I'm just saying like, I I don't, I just, it has to annoy the shit out of you when you see someone making jeans like yours. I mean, it's kind of like painful for me to see it. So I know for you, you and it seeps into your business. So, and it's also just like, you know, when someone does, I mean, I'm not going to You already know what I'm going to say. So it's 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 tough, you know. As somebody who has like a you know a great affinity to this industry, and um, I feel very fortunate to be allowed into the industry um, at the time that I was, because at that time, you know, like menswear wasn't really you know as big as it was. It was just like a counterpart to the whole entire business of retail. And then to be able to see it grow to where it is now is amazing. But I also know that there's like a lot of work that can still be done. Um, and I think that starts with everybody just staying in their own lane and doing their own thing. And we're just happy to be in the community like the next leaders are the ones who are going to control what's next in streetwear. You know, uh, So it's just all about, it's no new ideas, but it's new people. And so that's why, that's why I like new designers always, because it's like, oh, I ain't seen your take yeah. on this. Man. New. So I love all the new young kids. Bring it on. All the new designers. That's the next, you know. Well, I think on that note, thank you guys so much. Please give it up for all our panelists. Thank you, guys.